when I teach solubility rules, I look at them in like three different groups. So first off here are the um, compounds that are always soluble. So if you see an alkali metal ion, and I go ahead and list them all out, I don't assume students know what I'm talking about, then that compound would be uh, soluble. And also ammonium compounds, nitrates, chlorates, perchlorates, acetate, and I throw in bicarbonates as well. So these compounds are always, always soluble. And um, we're going to see that that is a rule that the AP people ask us to know already, has the students to know. Then there are ones that are generally soluble. And these are the interesting ones, you know, where you get a lot of uh, questions on the AP test about that. And it comes up like uh, chlorides, bromides, and iodides. So they're usually soluble, except when you see them with silver, lead, and mercurius. And I try to remember those A, P, and H. So I just say A, P, H, like A, P, and honors classes. That's my mnemonic for remembering silver, lead, and mercurius. And when I talk to my students, and I do have them write all nine compounds, silver chloride, silver bromide, lead chloride, lead bromide, lead iodide, mercury, mercurius, so that they know what those compounds look like. Then there's another rule here for fluorides. Fluorides are soluble except for calcium, barium, strontium, lead, and magnesium. And my uh, mnemonic for that is CBSPM, which is like, you know, the station CBS at night. So CBSPM, calcium, barium, strontium, lead, and magnesium. Sulfates are soluble except for calcium, barium, strontium, and lead. So I use the idea of CBS and PBS, and I tell them it's the same BS in both cases. And then they always giggle. Um, generally insoluble oxides and hydroxides, those are usually precipitates, but they will be somewhat soluble if you put them with calcium, barium, and strontium, and the ones that are always, always soluble. So uh, oxides and hydroxides, usually not soluble, usually very low solubility, except for calcium, barium, strontium, and let's say the alkali metals and ammonium. And then here's a list of ones that are almost always insoluble, unless you put them with, you know, the ones that are always soluble, like the alkali metals and ammonium. So carbonate, phosphate, sulfide, sulfite, uh, oxalate, and chromate. So those guys are usually not soluble. So those are solubility rules. It's not quite so bad if you put them in clumps like this. So always soluble, okay, usually soluble, and usually not soluble. And I think that's a really useful way to learn solubility rules.